modification we're going to be doing to my 2003 Saab 93 today is something I've been wanting to do for quite a while and kind of a part that I found is a little bit difficult to source for these cars and that is wheel spacers. All modern Saabs with the exception of like the 94X, 97X and the NG95 come with 5x110 wheels which are not a very common size or bolt pattern I should say four wheels so for example the wheels that i have on this car right now are called sport edition p3 they're 18 by 8. Uh, these are no longer made in 5 by 110 you can still get them in 5 by 112. along with it being difficult to sometimes find good aftermarket wheels for these cars finding spacers can be just as difficult so i've searched for a long time trying to find good spacers kind of on and off there's actually a set that came up used locally, so I ended up picking these up and uh, we're gonna install them on the car today. Right here is the brand of wheel spacer we're going with. I would have liked to have gone with a higher quality brand, but it's really hard to find spacers that are also skinny enough to kind of meet what I need. And what I mean by that is these wheels are 18 by eight, like I mentioned. So with the stock wheels, which I think were like 16 by six and a half, a 25 or 30 millimeter spacer probably would have been required to actually get this to sit flush. But for me with these wider wheels, I really think I only need a 10 or 15 millimeter spacer. These particular ones are 12 millimeters. So I think it should solve my fitment issue. I'm only going to be putting these in the rear uh, the front fitment is pretty good if I do say so myself. So uh, I think adding 12 millimeter to that would pretty much have the tire on the fender right here, which uh, we obviously do not want. And one last item I wanna mention here is that when you install spacers on your car, you're obviously going to have less space for the stock lug bolts. This is actually an aftermarket lug bolt. I just happen to have to use as an example, but the stock lug bolt now threads in less to the uh, hub of the car. So you also need longer wheel bolts. These are 39 millimeters long, uh, M12 by 1.5. I actually ordered these wheel bolts off of Bimmer World, oddly enough, but they had a decent price on these and uh, had exactly what I needed. So I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, jack the rear of the car up and we can fix this uh, kind of set in fitment in the rear here. I'm filming the one corner of the car where I'm missing a center cap, unfortunately, and these center caps are larger than the uh, stock one, so I can't just get a stock one. So another little problem I got to figure out, but I figured I'd just address the elephant in the room before uh, someone says something. You'll see that the spacer here, unfortunately it doesn't come with a lip that kind of extends out like the hub has a lip right there, which would make it a lot easier to set the wheel on. Um, but this bevel should be facing inwards like this. So you can see with the spacer on there, there's barely any space for the wheel to rest. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult to uh, get these to set on here. There's a special tool you can get that's basically a uh, lug nut, but without a head on it, you can just screw it in to kind of line everything up. I wish I had one of those. I'm probably gonna invest in one now that I'm uh, doing this job. One way you can know if your threads are long enough with your extended bolts, and if you're buying the bolts and the spacers together, you should be fine. These bolts are meant for 12 to 15 millimeter spacers, so I should be fine. Um, but one way you can tell is by making sure you get 10 full rotations on this until it locks. So I think what I'm gonna do, since this is my first time putting them on, is just kind of get them all started and then tighten them all down one by one and just verify on a couple of them that I'm getting 10 rotations. Since I'm using new lug bolts, another item I wanna point out is I'm putting a little bit of anti-seize on the end of the threads of each one. This will prevent it from getting seized onto the hub, especially if you live somewhere where it's rusty. I don't, but I'm still gonna do it just as a precaution. 
I just went ahead and finger tightened all of these. It was kind of a long and a little bit of a tedious process because I don't have that tool. Um, but I did pull a couple out and hand tighten them and count the amount of rotations. On the two I did count, I got just about 10. One was nine and three quarters. The other one was like 10 and a half. So I think I might not have counted one of them exactly um, right when it started. It's kind of hard to know exactly when it starts. But I think nonetheless, when I put it back down and finish torquing it, it should get that last quarter turn. So I get the 10 uh, full rotations, which will be perfect. Um, however, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now. I'm not going to film it though, because well, it's a little bit tight over here and I've got the uh, 900 transmission in the way. With both sides on and checked, let's go ahead and lower it down and I'm going to torque it down to about 90 foot pounds. I'm going to torque it down the other way to prevent you guys getting a nice ass shot. So normally I'd use gravity to torque, but And it looks like I'm getting about another quarter turn here, which is absolutely perfect. Do the same on the other side. I can already notice a pretty substantial difference here. Oh yeah. I think it needs to drop another quarter inch or so uh, because it was just in the air and the suspension needs to settle again. But look at how that sits now versus I'll put a picture on the screen here of how it looked before that sits like absolutely almost perfectly flush. So I think 12 millimeters was perfect for me in terms of getting my fitment perfect here. One final item I want to add here, um, sort of a uh, debunking uh, myth or a misbelief that I actually had myself. I initially thought that it was sort of the ring down here that holds the weight of the wheel as opposed to the concentric portion of the lug nuts themselves holding the wheel to the hub and that's actually what holds the the weight of the wheel and the force of the wheel is that and not this little ring right here the little ring certainly helps to sort of set the wheel on there and level it but uh the lug nuts themselves obviously are what actually hold it to the wheel or to the hub i should say Around the front, you can see the tire just kind of sticking out just a little bit, which I love. And you come back here, and you can see sort of got the same deal going on, but it doesn't stick out and look stupid. Doesn't obviously look like it has spacers on it. So I am super, super satisfied with how this turned out. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. What do you think? How's the car look? See y'all next time.